In this video, I'm going to talk about nuclear decay. Nuclear decay. Um, let's let me just start with a review on what um, we might already have seen about nuclear decay and what what people generally know. Perhaps, uh, okay, this might not be in a very logical order. Perhaps I'll, I'll just start by mentioning um, about the alpha, beta, and gamma particles. And so, just to give an example, um, just to give some examples of well, we, I, I have mentioned in, in various videos that these are very penetrating particles that comes out from the nuclei of elements or, or the atoms of certain elements and they, are, they have been used to, to do experiments like um, for example the alpha, alpha particles has been used to uh, by Rutherford to study the the nucleus to this even discover the nucleus of the atom. So how how does this actually come about? Well, different elements, for example, alpha particles can be produced by different elements. So one example is this. Let's say um, uranium two three eight. Uranium two three eight can the nucleus of uranium two three eight it can actually emit an alpha particle. So let's have a look at the equation to see what what actually happens to to the nucleus. Or to be to be precise, the nuclei, all right, the specific uh, nucleus with ninety two protons and two three eight protons and neutrons all together. Now, when the uranium atom, uh, the uranium nuclei emits an alpha particle, it will it will turn into um, thorium, the, the thorium nuclei with um, two three two hundred two hundred and thirty four protons and neutrons and let's see just ninety and just ninety protons and the alpha particle uh, as you might already know is actually it's actually a helium nucleus with two protons four protons and neutrons all together okay now if you look at these numbers here if you look at these numbers here you see that the Whereas in the beginning the number of protons is 92, after giving out this alpha particle, the number of proton, uh, uh, protons in, in this product, the thorium nucleide, is 90, number of protons in the alpha particle is 2, and the total number of protons still add up to 92, the same as before. Okay. And Likewise, if we compare the total number of protons and neutrons, at first it's 238, and then when it gives out the alpha particle, we have 234 in the thorium nucleide and 4 protons and neutrons in the, in the helium. So the total number of protons and neutrons is still 238. So that hadn't changed. And what it means is that in the, the total number of neutrons is still the same. Okay, so let me just write this down. For this particular reaction, the total uh, protons remain the same after the this is a reaction. So after this reaction or after giving up the alpha particle. And the total number of neutrons also remain the same. 
Now this is true true for many of such uh, nuclear reactions, but not all. In a moment, I'll take a look at beta particle in which this is actually not true. But in this case, it, it is. The total number of protons and total number of neutrons remain the same in this reaction. Now, and we might uh, also look at the masses. Right? Previously, I've talked about mass defects, binding energies, and, and so on and so on. So, let's take a look at, at, at the masses of this and see if see what kinds of uh, or if there is any mass defect and binding energy issues involved down here um, let's see now. oh right okay well let, let, let me skip that part okay uh, so let me now go on to look at um, so this is an example, this is an example of a reaction uh, in which alpha particle is emitted. So it, it is a kind, an example of a nuclear uh, reaction as well. In the same way as the fission and fusion examples that I've looked at in the earlier videos. So, um, so I'll just also briefly mention that um, because because in this uh, reaction, the alpha particle is normally emitted with with uh, a high energy, so that is is it would it would come out of the the radioactive substance with a with a very high speed, um, usually some fraction of the speed of light. It also means that um, the total we would expect that the total mass of the product has to be a little bit less than original mass of the uranium nuclei because some of the mass would be converted to kinetic energy of the helium the, the, the alpha particle okay so they understand our understanding of the binding energy and mass defects uh, from earlier videos will apply so this is an example for for alpha particle now let's let me now look at example for beta particle um, let's see. okay I'll look at I'll start with potassium now potassium has 19 protons it has 40 protons and neutrons all together so that must be mean um, 21 neutrons it can change into can change into a calcium a calcium nucleide with 40 protons and neutrons all together altogether so no change in the total number and let's see how many protons would it have it would actually have 20 protons the proton number would have would increase right calcium is 20 protons and the other product is an electron just our familiar simple electron and this electron will be given out with a, a, a very high energy of 1.35 MeV in this case right, so again data that I that I found from Wikipedia. Okay. So and this would be this would be our the alpha part uh, the, the beta particle. Right? This would be the beta particle. Now let's have a look at what's actually going on here. Now previously I've talked about how in this particular example the total number of protons and neutrons remain the same in, in the case of alpha particle emission. Uh, but in, in this example, clearly, 
clearly the number of protons is larger, becomes bigger than before. So what's actually going on here? How, how is it possible that the number of protons increases? Now, let's think about it this way. We have uh, an electron emitter. We have an electron emitted, okay, and let me write down here the, the number of protons and neutrons. There are for protons, for protons, there are 19, okay, and for the calcium, there are 20. For neutrons, in the beginning, there are, let's add up to 40, right, so there are 21 add up to 40 and after the reaction then there must be 20 it is still add up to 40 now if you look at this if you look at this um, what just happened you have 19 protons and now you have 20 we had 21 proton neutrons and now we had 20 so the neutron number has decreased. One neutron has disappeared. One neutron has disappeared. And one proton has appeared. So actually what happens is that one neutron, one neutron must have changed to the pro a proton. Right? If one neutron has changed to a proton, then then that could explain what happened. That could explain why these numbers change in this way. So one proton, one proton, oh sorry, one neutron must have changed to a proton. See, if one neutron has changed to a proton, then the neutron number would de decrease by one, and the proton number would increase by one. So, so it's kind of um, makes sense, okay? And then we have this, but if a neutron changes to a proton, the well, the mass is almost the same, but uh, so that seems possible. But the neutron charge is zero. The neutron charge is zero. The proton charge is a positive charge of one. So it looks like there's a increase in the charge. Right, at first, there's no charge. Now we have a charge, but then there is also this production of the beta particle, which is an electron. So, so perhaps, you know, when neutron changes into a proton, right? Let's not worry about why or that that would happen uh, for now. I suppose that it, it can actually happen. So, as uh, then, when neutron changes a proton, it must also produce this electron. Okay, so let's say that this is what actually happens. Now, if you look at this, if you look at this, um, in terms of the masses, electrons, the electron is a lot lighter than the proton. So the total mass of these two is almost the same as the neutron mass, uh, and with some uh, difference that we can uh, say that that can be the mass defect, all right? That might go to the energy of the the electron. So that seems uh, possible. And if you look at the the charges, the neutron has a zero a zero electric charge, and the products um, the products you have plus one for the proton and minus one for the electron, and the total is zero. Right, the total is zero, and that, and now, the total charges after the reaction, the total charges agrees with the initial charge. So this looks seems like a logical conclusion, and indeed this has uh, has been confirmed um, to be what actually happens in in this reaction. So this is something uh, which 
is rather uh, strange if if you're seeing it for the first time. A neutron actually turns into a proton and emits an electron. Okay, so in other words, the neutron is not something that cannot change. Right? It can actually change. Okay, so this is actually and this is actually what happens. This is actually what happens. So in this case, we have a situation in which um, uh, the this reaction no longer follows this rule in which the total protons and and must be the same and neutrons must be the same. All right, in this beta particle emission, the proton and neutron numbers can can both change. Can both change. But one thing that um, does not change. One thing that still does not change is uh, let, let me just summarize what is it that does not change. The total charge does not change. Okay, as I as I described just now. So in this example, total charge stays the same, and um, Okay, what else stays the same? Ah, you see that number there, forty and forty. The total number of protons and neutrons. All right, they can change into each other, but the total number stays the same. Okay, total proton plus neutron same. Total number of protons and neutrons stay the same. Okay, so um. Now I I should say something about the gamma just to be complete the gamma radiation. Let's have a look. Um, now so. Um, let me just say, uh, for example, the gamma particle, gamma particles, or gamma radiation can be emitted uh, from a cesium, cesium one three seven, from this isotope. Just as an example, now in the emission of an alpha particle, um, the equation, the the nuclear Equation is a lot simpler than this, okay? Because uh, after this emits an alpha particle, uh, if I, let me just write this down. When uh, when this emits an alpha particle, there's no change in the in the formula for the cesium nuclide itself. It's still cesium one three seven. The only uh, thing in the equation that we need to add is is that it has emitted a beta particle, all right? Uh, a gamma particle, gamma particle, and a gamma particle um, is actually a, a photon or a, an energy of a photon, or you might you know represent it by HF uh, from what we learned about photoelectric effects for the energy of a photon. So it looks simple enough, and but of course, uh, something complicated has happened in something must have happened in in the nucle in the nucleide, and what has actually happened is that the the protons and neutrons in the nucleide they have rearranged themselves in some way, okay, so that uh, so that they have they now have a lower energy. They now have a slightly lower energy arrangement in the nucleide, all right? Which is why the the difference in energy is given out as a gamma ray photon. So what goes on inside is probably uh, rather complicated, and I have no idea either. So I shan't go into that. So, uh, but for for uh, for this uh, video, I'm just going to say that. There's in as as far as the equation is concerned, there's no change in the elements. There's no change in in the nucleide. Uh, 
itself uh, as in no change in the number of protons and neutrons okay but of course the energy must have changed and we have to add the emission of uh, a gamma photon to this uh, nuclear equation